Hi, science friends. It's Ms. Van. Have you ever heard of Pangea? Yeah, you know, they say all the continents used to all be connected. But how do scientists know that? Here's a cool model that shows how they understand how it happened. But how do they know? No one was around 200 million years ago. Well, they know because of fossil evidence. And that's what we're going to be learning about in the reconstruction of Gondwana land. Hey, we're going to do this Gondwana land puzzle today. And so I hope you have all of your materials out and ready. Here it is, Gondwana land puzzle. And um, here are all the materials you'll need. Scissors, glue. You could use tape if you don't have glue. You'll need four different colors and uh, an additional piece of paper. So if you don't have color paper, that's fine. You could use printer paper, or you could just grab your science spiral notebook and use some of the paper and just put it in your notebook and that way it won't be lost. You can do it right there onto the page. Uh, what I wanna point out is that in part one uh, is not there, it tells you to color the fossil evidence for each species shown in the key. You will need four colors. So I'm going to uh, show you that in part two. Okay, so here's part two. We have colored the four fossil evidence. I have chosen yellow to represent the fossil of a land reptile called Cynaganthus. And here he is. The fossils show us that's what he looks like. For purple, I'm using that color to represent a uh, Triassic land reptile called Lystosaurus. He was a much bigger guy. Look at that guy. Wow. Glad he's not around anymore. And then finally, oh no, not finally, we've got green for the fern, right? That's a plant. This is what it looked like. Wow, I imagine Earth was kind of nice and uh, warm back then. Looks tropical. And here's a fossil of that plant called... Uh, Gloss, Glossopterus. Okay, then I used orange to represent our reptile, Mesosaurus. There he is, Mesosaurus. That's going to be purple. Pan out, and you can see that I have matched the patterns, right? Look at those patterns. And I have found out where on the plates have those fossils been found, right? That is what the colors represent that paleontologists have found fossils in those locations. Okay, we are on uh, part two now, and we're uh, working on step number two. Step number two says, cut away and discard the white space on your map. So that's where you're gonna have to do some cutting out and get rid of all that white space until your paper looks like this, all right? Then, coming back to the directions, we're going to read uh, step number three. Cut the plates. Here we are right here. Step number three. Hello, cameraman. Cut the plates apart along the plate boundaries. These boundaries are found in the middle of the oceans. Now, this is the tricky part, okay? The plate boundaries are not around the continents. So here's Africa, right? You're not going to cut around the outline of Africa. You're going to plate, you're going to cut where the plates come together. And that's going to be in the dark gray region, right? So I'm kind of tracing that with this purple pen. So go ahead, or three, cut the plates apart along the plate boundaries. Before you start cutting at the plate boundaries, you might want to trace those lines first with a dark pen or marker or crayon. They are a little bit hard to see, so use this video to help you to know where those plate boundary lines are. Okay, I have cut along the plate boundaries, and this is an important step because it really helps you to understand that a tectonic plate includes not only the land, the continents, but the hard solid rock that is connected to the plates, I mean to the continents, right? So look at Africa here. All of this dark area that's around Africa, here let me show you with this blue pen. This is all what you would not see normally because it's covered with the ocean water, right? And um, 
So just because you can't see the land from uh, an aerial view, that is hard solid rock under the ocean water, under the sand, uh, under all the seaweed and animal creatures. You have hard solid rock that is connected to the hard solid rock of the continents. Now going back to the steps, we're on step four. And this might seem crazy now because step four says to cut away the ocean floor, this hard solid rock formed between the land masses over the last 200 million years. So yeah, now you're gonna cut out the hard solid rock. I mean, not the hard solid rock, you're gonna cut away the ocean floor. So you're separating the hard solid rock of the ocean floor from the hard solid rock of the continents. And look here, I have now done that. Step five, use the fossil evidence and the shapes of the land masses to reconstruct Gondwana land as it was 200 million years ago. How are you gonna do that? Well, use the colors, right? You're matching up the fossil evidence that was on uh, Africa having a focusing problem. Come on, focus, focus, there we go. And you're going to match that up with the fossil evidence on other continents. Ooh, that seems like a match. And then go ahead and match up the other pieces until you can get all the different fossil evidence to be um, matched up, kind of like a puzzle. Your final step is to glue your Gondwana land to the blank sheet of paper. And so I'm not gonna show you a finished one. I don't wanna take away the joy of you being able to accomplish this on your own. Go into Google Classroom and answer some of the discussion questions that I have posted for you there. Oh wow, I forgot to tell you that of course you're gonna take a picture of your reconstructed Gondwana land to show what the continents might have looked like 200 million years ago. So take a picture when it's all glued up, glued together. Not this one, this one's not done yet, all right? I'm talking about when you have finished reconstructing Gondwana land, take a photo of it with your Chromebook and send it to me in the Google Classroom assignment. Thanks.